From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. I think you're going to agree with me that these are some of the most outstanding headlines that I have ever given to you globally. The first one, I was quite surprised. I'm quoting the president. He said, stamp out network of death. Woo, he's taken quite a different stand than he did for a while there. And then going on, this surprises me and grieves my heart. Americans leave home to wage jihad for ISIS. They're joining them. I can't believe that some of our young people would do that. And then Tony Blair, thank the Lord he spoke up. World must take a stand against radical Islam. Thank you, Tony Blair. I appreciate that statement so very, very much. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I made the, the uh, statement that uh, Jack started his ministry long before I ever met him with Dr. Billy Graham. Jack, you loved those days, didn't you? Well, we told you we'd be telling you a little bit about our work in those days. We had 800 full-length church crusades, and then we went into mass citywide meetings like Billy Graham stadiums, etc., and 10 million attended those, and we had two and a half million saved all through these 67 years, praise his name. But you know when you start out as an evangelist, it's tough. People look around and say, oh, look what the Vanipies have on television. Well, it was 10 years of hard labor for us and small offerings, little churches. And in the Grand Crusades, you'd see him say, if you want Jesus, uh, raise your hand. And we did the same thing, following him. Well, this new evangelist couldn't make it financially, so he got a summer job as a lifeguard. And the first week, the board that ran the place said, what is wrong? Four guys died this week. He, they drowned. Let's see what he's doing. So they're sitting here watching him. And he's up there, the lifeguard, you know, and guys out there, help, 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 help. He's, God bless you. I see that hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I can right. just see some guys like that in the ministry. Oh, Let's my, go on, oh, honey. My. You know, Jake, those days were good for oh, me, yeah. though. They really helped me to grow in the Lord. I was from a church of 2,000 people. And to see some of the smaller churches and how they had to grow, it blessed my heart, Jack, and praise the Lord. revivals for a whole week in the living room of some guys' well, houses. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We know, friends, in a series of appearances, President Obama outlined a very different U.S. approach to the Middle East than he previously had. I'd like for you to please take a look at this first headline. U.S. presses for world to act. Whoa, that's a different stand than he was taking for a while. And then Obama urges coalition to battle militants. Get together and go against them. Again, Obama, unite against terror. And this is uh, what he had to say to the United Nations. Forces all terrorists understand, Obama says. Now, there's quite a change there, friends. I think that you'll recognize that. I'm going to ask Jack, why the change, Jack? Why did he say, we've got to come against them right now? Well, first of all, he said, after I saw these two Americans beheaded by these Muslims, he said, I became angry. And I thought, I'm going to do something about it. Yeah, Mr. President, there were 500,000 Christians slaughtered, the Chaldeans. You didn't do a thing about that. And they even cried in Washington in March, Obama, where are you? Obama, where are you? The answer back then probably was the golf course or a fundraising meeting for the Democrats for the next election. He thought that by bringing home all the boys, everyone would be satisfied, but it didn't help. His ratings dropped to 34%. And then when the Americans realized that ISIS might come here and start slaughtering us on the streets and beheading us here, as has been done recently, they said 68%. We want to do something. And so he read the figures and saw the light. 
Mm. Jack, you know, I really appreciate something uh, that he hasn't done for all of us. He's enlightened us as to the time we are living, pointing to the coming of the Lord. It's so significant. Somebody else did this, too. And I like to put something on the screen by Bishop Lau of London, England. He proclaimed the message of Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 in 1713. Can you believe that one? This is dynamite. Ezekiel's prophecy without question relates to the latter ages of the world when Israel shall return to their own land. Rosh signifies those inhabitants of Cynthia from whence the Russians derive their name. This formidable invasion of the land of Israel God will defeat. The Persians, Iran and Iraq, and Afghanistan from the east, the Ethiopians from the south, and the Moors, Libyans from the west shall join with Rosh in this invasion. This is from one of the leaders of England's churches, one of their bishops 313 years ago, and I accept every word of it. It's what I've been teaching, and you're going to hear it today. It all ties in with why this war is on and why it means Jesus is about to return, the second coming of Christ. All right, Jack, before I go on with this dynamite headlines that I've, I've chosen for you today, I want to just pick three things out of what Bishop Laud said. One, number one, Israel shall become a nation. Jack, they were in a nation for, for many, many hundreds of years. Oh, this is powerful. People say, oh, we've always heard those signs uh, from Matthew 24, wars, rumors of wars, etc. That's not what Jesus said. You've missed it. He said in Matthew 24, verse 32, learn the parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and breaks forth its leaves. You know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you shall see all these signs in connection with the budding of the fig tree. That's when I'm coming back. What? Who's the fig tree? Joel 1, 7. Israel's at war and said they have barked, stripped our fig tree, our nation. In Hosea 9, 10, he's talking about the first fathers of the nation of Israel, and he calls them the first fruits of the fig tree. So no doubt about it. Now what Jesus is saying is, I will only come when you see all of these signs, wars, women's wars, famines, pestilences, every sign here connected with Israel being a nation and controlling Jerusalem. This is spine tingling. They became a nation in 1948 and captured Jerusalem in 1967. So for 2011 years, Russia could not invade them. And that is found 18 times in chapters 38 and 39. Chapter 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19. Chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice, and 7. 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, and 29. They couldn't invade them. There was no issue to invade. That's why we are the generation, because now they can, and now there's a Russia, and now they're in control of Jerusalem, and the World War III called... Armageddon, Revelation 16, 60, is fought over the dividing of Jerusalem, which is going on right now. We are the generation. Look up, he's coming. Well, Jack, you know, that's the only thing that's encouraging. Yeah. So many people say, oh, Rex, all the headlines. But I'm going to say the good news is that it points to the return of the Lord Jesus is coming again. Now, one quick question here before we go on to those dynamic headlines. The Persians. You know, Bishop Lau pointed out the Persians. Who are they? They join with Russia. Who are they, Jack? Well, that's Iran and Iraq. But I'm not going to get into all of this right now. If you want to study this, I'll go slowly on this. Look at Daniel 1140, Isaiah 17, 1, Ezekiel 38, verses 5 to 7, and Psalm 83, verses 5 to 7. And you know why they're marching to Jerusalem? Get it. Psalm 83, 4, let us cast Israel off from being a nation that their name be no more in remembrance. But you're not going to win because God says, I'll give Israel an everlasting name, Isaiah 56, 5. But one thing, boy, this is exciting. I just saw it a few weeks ago. Wow, listen to this. This bird who heads it all up, this head, Hancho, Abdu, Baghdadi, named his organization originally ISIS, Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. And of course, that includes Southern Turkey. Where does World War III begin? Right there. 
What? It's called Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16, and it's declared and defined in Revelation 9, 14 to 18. And the term angels here, I'm changing to demons. Loose the four demons in the great river Euphrates to slay a third part of mankind. And the number of the army was 200,000, 200 million. And by these three was the third part of men killed. Fire, smoke, brimstone. Where does the Euphrates run? Right through Iraq, Syria, and southern Turkey. Exactly where Armageddon's going to be fought, where the world's going to die. Now, this guy's not going to make it. He's going to be defeated. You watch and see. There will be a peace contract. It'll only last 42 months, Daniel 9, 27, and then all hell breaks loose. And the verses I just quoted about the demons being loose and the third part of the world's population dying is then. That's how near it is. But then Jesus comes back to put a stop to all this destruction. Revelation 11, 18. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the Prince of Peace will change things here. Come back, Jesus. Jack, I'm glad you went through all that again because we need to have our minds refreshed as we read the newspapers. But I have to confess, what I'm going to give you now has moved my heart probably more than most of the things that I have read about our present day situation. The past few months we've been made aware that many men and women are leaving their homelands, not just America, but many countries to go back to Syria and join the radical jihadists. Well, let's consider America Traitors first. Traitors and turncoats, yes. Rexella. America first. Take a look, please. Americans leave home to wage jihad for ISIS. Hey, in Minneapolis, you know what happened? This young man left nine children and his wife behind to go over there. Islamic State recruits female jihadists in U.S. heartland. And then again, Al-Qaeda magazine hints of a looming attack on America. Oh my, oh my, can you imagine that our young men and women are going over there to fight for them, Jack? Now, remember the name Alaki? He was killed by a drone in Yemen. Do you know that he was an American who left our land to go and join the Islamic terrorists and kill as many Americans and others as he could? In fact, he put out a paper called Inspire and sent it to all the Muslim-situated mosques in the country, right here in Dearborn. And in one of the issues, I read it, he said, I want all you young people to start getting trucks and putting blades on the front of them and running through the crowds and slicing them up. God forgive these wicked warriors. Mm, Jack. I should say, my oh my. And then we're going to go on with another one here that surprised me. It has to do with uh, the visas of students lost in America. A visa program struggles to track missing foreign students. Let's take a closer look. The immigration agencies own figures show that 58,000 students overstayed their visas in the past year. Of those, 6,000 were referred to agents to follow up because they were determined to be of heightened concern. Can you believe that one? They better be concerned because of the 6,000 are missing. They don't know where they are. You know, Jack, I think they caught some of them too. Caught 26 and they were getting bombs ready to strike America, suicide bombers. God help us. Now, they don't know where they are, but let me give you more figures. They came on these student visas. Where are they? Nobody knows. And furthermore, there are 9,000 colleges that offer this to them now. And as of 2002, we had 67,000 here in those schools. And last year, we had 1 million 200,000, God help America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, when these monsters get here and start slicing away. God, we need you. We need a Holy Ghost revival. We need to awaken these preachers who never open their mouth, never warn their people, and someday they'll enter our churches, and as they've done all through all those nations over there where the Christians were, marched into their churches, 
bomb their churches, cut off their heads. Preacher, someday they may watch in your church. What are you going to do? What will you tell the people after it happens? Oh, friends, I tell you, we need to be praying, don't we? Have you prayed lately for those Christians who are suffering around the world? I want to ask that question because we say we want to pray, but do we really pray for those who are really suffering around the world? Jack, another question here I have for you. Where's all this found in the Bible? It is prophecy. The word of the living God, and that's Titus 1.16. They profess that they know God, but in works, daily living, they deny him being abominable, disobedient unto every good work, reprobate, counterfeit. Again, Romans 3, 13 to 18, their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues, they've used deceit. The poison of snakes is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood in the way of peace. Have they not known? Now, this is for the end times. 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 to 5. This know also that in the last day perilous, dangerous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God from such withdraw yourselves. And you, Rick Warren, in your crowd, let's get them together for little Bible studies. Study the similarities. What about the differences, Rick? Mm, Jack, that's so strong, but so good. And when he was naming over all those different things, I couldn't help but think some of those things might be in the lives of some of those watching. We need to get rid of anything we know God doesn't want there and also be ready for the coming of the Lord. Certainly we want our lives to be pure, don't we? And ready for his coming. And now, whoa, we have a brand new offer for you that is so dynamic. It has to do with Islam's flag over the White House. That's a good question. Take a look, please. Close your eyes right now and envision the White House with old glory flying high overhead. Now imagine the American flag gone and in its place the flag of Islam. Instead of red, white, and blue, the Islamic star and crescent with a sword and Arabic text. If it seems impossible here in America, think again. Radical Islamic extremists are hell-bent on taking over the world. They're already on their way here. 3,000 turncoat American citizens are presently studying and preparing in war-torn Syria how to become suicide bombers. God help us. Islamic cleric Anjem Cowdery told ABC's Christiane Amanpour that one day the flag of Islam will fly over the White House. Those who dismiss his statement as the ranting of the radical fringe aren't listening. Awake America, order the video, Islam's flag over the White House. Oh, friends, if ever you needed one of our videos, you need this one because what a question that is. They plan to do that. Now, with your order, there's the 800 number and there's the address. Please call right away. I'm going to give you that gift I talked about last week, our last offer, the Jesus of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. So when you make the order for this week's White House, we're also going to be sending you about the Jesus video, my gift with your order. Okay, Jack, I'm excited about this. You know how important it is you get these two things? Because I have made arrangements with my agents to play this around the world 25 or 30 weeks so they can tell one another what's on these things and tell others, listen next week, listen next week. And I've made arrangements that if anything happens to me because I've been under threats, this is to be carried on and through 2015. Get it. It's that important that you know the truth. Oh, yes. And if you've already, already ordered the Jesus video, say, hey, I already got it. Well, I'm going to send you the brand new one so that with your order you already have, I'll give you this one. When you order this one, I'll give you, it's a gift. So we want you to have both of them in your home. They're so important. Make the call. There's the 800 number, and there is the address. I'm going to look for your call mm -hmm. this week. Now, we're going to go on here, and I want to say we've been discussing America. And everything that's going on here, how young men and women are leaving to go over to become 
fighters for uh, ISIS. Let's consider other countries too. First of all, France, Islamic State crisis, and this is the, the French president, Hollande, warns of global threat. And then Tony Blair, I quoted this in the beginning of the program, we're almost take a stand against radical Islam. And can you believe this when British jihadist calls for prime minister to be beheaded? Jack, would you like to say something about this one, please? As you know, in America, in Oklahoma, this man became a Muslim, and they're calling it workplace violence, baloney. He was telling them, you need to turn to Allah. You need to become a Muslim. And these two ladies weren't listening, especially one. So he goes in and stabs her, but he doesn't have a sword. So he takes a pocket knife out and removes the head. Brutality. Listen to this, though. Abu Anwar said he would be more than honored to conduct a beheading like that of Jim Foley, recently killed, our journalist. Adding, I hope that Allah gives me a chance to do this to another enemy of Islam. My hands are ready to commit this blessed act for Allah. Keep going. Oh, Jack, I can't believe it. I'd like to go to another country. Our neighbor, the United States neighbor to the north, has to do with Canada. Canada's growing Islamic radicalization, a warning sign. Again, returning terrorists, a serious threat to Canada. Their people are leaving also to go over to become terrorists. Let's go to Germany. German intelligence chief Islamic State attack in Europe. Just a matter of time. Italy, Italian minister says Rome, primary target for Islamic State. As well as the Vatican, yeah. Rex Al said, we're going to hit them. Australia warns of danger from homegrown Islamists. Oh, my word. And then Hamas minister, first Israel, then the world. And American jihadists in Syria, entire world will be Muslim. Again, Singapore concerned over jihadists returning from Syria. Hey, there's another one. Singapore, there are young people coming back, returning from Syria. Now, we have shown you this before. Yeah, Tola Khomeini. And something that he has said, I just want to repeat it very, very quickly. The governments of the world should know that Islam will be victorious in all the countries of the world. And Islam and the teaching of the Quran will prevail all over the world. Uh, Jack, you'd like to read this next one, if you will, please. The chairman of Islamic Supreme Council of America. Get this, folks, because this is where Rick Warren has been twice to speak, and they said, oh, he's there to tell him about Jesus. Well, he'd be dead if he tried, because their Jesus is different. Listen to this. We see that the Mahdi will lead a world revolution that will institute a new world order based on the religion of Islam. The Mahdi will offer the religion of Islam to the Jews and Christians. If they accept it, they will be spared. Otherwise, they will be killed. Get it, ladies and gentlemen, and Prophet Jesus will be the executioner under Mahdi, and Islam will be victorious over all the religions. And they say, hey, why don't you Christians realize that we love Jesus too? Yeah, but he puts all Jews and Christians to death. That's not what you're telling the people. You know, Jack, I do have a question about their goal. Did you, did you get it? They want to take over the world. Not just the Islamic world, but the world. Does the Bible talk about that when it, may, when it talks about a world government? Is that what it means, Jack? Revelation 13, 1. He says that this beast that rose up out of the sea called the Antichrist will have control over all kindreds, tongues, people, and nations. And all the world will worship him. And there's a false prophet with him. Verses 11 to 18. And he controls the people with a mark, the mark of the beast, 666. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand of form that no man, no man, no man can buy or sell without that mark. That's world global control. It's coming, ladies and gentlemen. And Martin Luther and John Calvin said, It'll be both religions. There are two legs on that beast there in, in Daniel chapter 2, verses 31 and 32. One will be Islam, the other will be the other nations of the world. Oh, my dick. It's all shaping up, yeah, isn't yeah. it? It's all shaping up, friends. And when we talk about shaping up, it's going to shape up into something that is good. I have said this so many times on our program. 
Jesus gave us all these signs, and now they're here, and it points to his return. Oh, how we need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Is your life in order? Is your soul in order? Have you opened your heart to the Lord? Has he come in, forgiving you of all your sins that you don't want there? How good it is to know you're ready for the coming of the Lord. Oh, Jack, he's going to pray a prayer right now. Will you pray this prayer with him if you haven't, Jack? Do you realize after you heard all of this today that Jesus is a God of love, a God, yes, second member of the Trinity from all eternity, Micah 5, 2, and he loves. You know what Jesus says? He doesn't say go kill your brothers if they're apostates in the faith. Here's what he says in 1 John 3, 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God because God laid down his life for us and we Christians ought to lay down our lives for one another. Whoa! Do you want this, Jesus? Look at me pray it. Father, thank you for sending Jesus, God the Son, who shed his blood to cleanse us and wash us from every vile sin we've ever committed. Jesus, I want to be cleansed now. Thank you for the cross. Come into my heart. In your holy name, I pray this. Amen. Amen. Oh, if you prayed that prayer, will you please write to me? There's my address. I'd love to send you this little booklet. First steps in a new direction. You want to go another way in your life? Jesus wants to walk with you. And if you open your heart to the Lord Jesus, he came in, and he's going to walk with you and give you victory in your life over anything that's tempting you right now, write to me. I'll send you this little book, First Steps in a New Direction, How Good to Walk with the Lord. Now, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive our brand new offer, Islam's flag over the White House, and my gift with your order. Here's our announcer, Chuck. Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Islam's flag over the White House. Have your credit card ready and call toll free. 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. Remember, there's 800 number. There's my address, my gift with your order. So make the call right away. It's so needed for all of us to understand where we really stand right now. Oh, my. So many of us want to have victory in our lives. How can we overcome Satan? I'll give you the answer in this good saying. Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saint on his knees. You need to be trusting the Lord and talking with him. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we. Bye-bye.